I've shared with you that I've sold the HDB flat that I've been renting out for years and I've also shared with you that I've actually been buying into REITs. Today, I'll be sharing with you a bit deeper as to why I've decided to invest in particular into MPACT, which is Maple Tree Pan Nature Commercial Trust and Maple Tree Industrial Trust. So if you're curious about it, continue watching on. So without further ado, let's start with the first name that we should cover, which is MPACT, Maple Tree Pan Nature Commercial Trust. Let me give you some history, just in case you haven't read to it too much. MPACT is actually formed with the merger of MCT, Maple Tree Commercial Trust, which mainly owns Singapore assets, and MNACT, which is Maple Tree North Asia Commercial Trust. MNACT previously had assets that were in Asia, China, Korea, and in particular, Hong Kong. And later, I'll be sharing with you how to actually understand this whole combination of assets a bit better. And this merger actually took place in start of 2022. Back then, the rationale was that when they merge, they become a bigger entity. And acquiring new properties just makes it easier. And in many ways, it's true because there's actually a leverage ratio that REITs need to adhere to, which means the total amount of debt over the total number of assets cannot be more than 50%. So what it also means is that right now, there's asset under management of $16.7 billion. That's the denominator. And when that denominator is bigger, you realize that if they take on a $1 billion loan to acquire a new mall, for example, they can easily stomach that even though the total debt now that they hold is about $6.9 billion. Previously, when they were separate, MAACT was already quite leveraged and on its own, probably it didn't have that much room to acquire big assets. On the other hand, MCT, which is Maple Tree Commercial Trust, seemed to have a mandate too narrow, which is in Singapore's assets. That's why this combination can be seen as a win-win and in many ways, I agree with that. And what we can see from this graph over here, AUM, this actually breaks down where its assets are. You realize the biggest piece is actually Festival Walk, which is actually a mall in Hong Kong. I don't know you've been there, but I haven't been there myself personally. Next biggest is MBC, Maple Tree Business Center. And last but not least, Vivo City. I've been to Vivo City like a thousand times. <laughs> if I go there every week, so if you are keen to bump into me, uh, I definitely spend quite a lot of time there. So I'm super familiar with Vivo City and its traffic. Then of course, they own assets in China, Japan, and in South Korea. And the simple way to understand things is always, you know, this 80-20 rule. Which means if we understand and track Festival Walk, Maple Tree Business Center, and Vivo City, we kind of can guess what's going to happen to MPA City. The rest of the assets don't actually move the needle that much. And hang with me a bit longer, I'll show you more details of what their operational performances are. But let's drill down to the debt because in a lot of ways, the sentiment in REIT right now is impacted because of higher interest costs, correct? So let me flash out for you to see in the map, what the current debt ratio are, what are the matrices, and what to expect further. The first thing that we should drill on is the percentage of fixed debt, which is 78.3% right now. And this is pretty healthy as compared to many Singapore REITs. Just now I mentioned about leverage ratio, right now it's 40.2%. And the cap again is 50%, which means again, Maple Tree Pan Asia Commercial Trust can easily swallow a $1 billion asset. Next up is the weighted average all-in debt cost of 2.57%. Now this is lower than many other REITs, and my guess is because Hong Kong's debt is cheap, Japan's debt is cheap. But the key question is always, will this cost be escalating a lot or not in the next few quarters? That's where we see on the right-hand side, what is the debt maturity profile? You realize that for financial 2022 and 2023, there's only 5% that's going to mature. For next fiscal year, there's only 13% that's going to mature. So all in all, the amount that they need to refinance is only this on the immediate horizon, 18%. Of course, this will bump up the average cost from 2.57% up by another 50 basis points. I don't know. But the main part is this is definitely not distress. Very easy to handle. And how to define very easy? The simplest way is to compare with another read. So let me pull up Lipo Mall's Indonesia read. Now, this is not a buy and sell recommendation. Uh. I'm just pulling it for comparison to highlight how I interpret risk. On the left-hand side, you see now MPA City, and on the right-hand side, Lipo Malls, Indonesia. What we can see from leverage ratio is 40.2% for MPA City, but Lipo Mall is 44.6%, and they are much smaller, which means they have very little room to acquire bigger assets. Next, you also see fixed debt, 78.3% for MPA City, and average term to maturity of debt, 2.8 years. You compare that to Lipo Malls, you realize that they have to do a lot of refinancing very soon. And last but not least, with the average cost for MPA City is 2.57% only. And if you compare that to Lipo Malls, you realize that having malls and assets in a third world country, 
the cost is very high at 7.26%. Interest coverage ratio is another factor that is in favor of MPACT, but the main rounding point you can take away from this is that MPACT is very healthy. There's no default risk and major hiccups to dividends that I can foresee. And then let's drill back down to the 80-20 rule to understand how its assets are performing. And before I get there, let me smash the like button, press on subscribe, especially you like content like this. It helps you understand how to invest a bit better. Now let's see in this leasing update, we realize that the three biggest assets, MBC, Vivo City, and Festival Walk, have declared their rental reversions. I don't know why it's called reversion. I thought it was revision, but hopefully my English is correct. And there are good parts and bad parts. Generally, everything is revised upwards, and in particular, Vivo City, clocking in at 7.9% rental reversions. And if you head down to Vivo City, you definitely know that it's super crowded. If you deep dive into the investor presentation, you realize that shopper traffic, while it's not back as you speak, shoppers are actually spending more money. Simply because the clothes are more expensive, the food is more expensive, but that's definitely true. But shoppers are spending more money, which means even though the footfall is less, the revenue that each store can generate on average is definitely higher than before, which gives the REIT more room to increase its rent. But the same cannot be said of festival work. This 12.7% decline in rental reversions is a concern. And I also have to add in that in the previous year, they actually did a minus 27% rental reversions. So from its peak, it's very, very far away down already for festival walk. I haven't been to Hong Kong for many years. I really don't know what's the mall doing like. And if anything, this is the biggest risk to MPACT's performance. But I do see some silver linings. Over here, I've actually found from trading economics, some actual performances of retail sales in Hong Kong. We'll see over there that Hong Kong actually clocked a big gain in January, correct? In terms of retail sales. And the simple reason is because 8th of January, 2023, China actually did its reopening. And this favorable data in January captures that momentum. I think it's no brainer to guess this good momentum has legs moving forward. And when I look around on YouTube to see how is Festival Walk doing, I think in general, it still looks okay. So hopefully this asset starts picking up and that's where we see big unexpected kickers upwards for MPACT. With that, I'd like to add a last point. Last year, when this merger happened, Sponsor MapleTree actually injected money themselves because they promised to buy all unsubscribed rights at $2 themselves. I've always kept that in view and therefore this current price of $1.70 plus cents and with China's opening up having more clarity, I do see it personally as a bargain. Let me know in comment sections whether you agree or not and with that, let's move on to MapleTree Industrial Trust. MapleTree Industrial Trust owns totally different assets from MapleTree Pan-Asia Commercial Trust. One is a data center focused read the other owns malls, business parks, and offices. And when we see the book value of them, you realize that they also paint a different picture. Most data centers right now are priced at a premium to book value. That includes what I've circled over there, Capital DC Read and Ascenders Read. Ascenders has recently purchased quite a bit more data centers. But the key focus today is Maple Tree Industrial Trust. Just in case you're not familiar with it, let me give a broad perspective. Maple Tree Industrial Trust owns $8.8 .8 billion worth of assets and currently half of it is in US and in particular in US data centers. It has some legacy assets which are flatter factories, high-tech buildings, and ramp-up buildings. And there's usually some confusion as to what's the difference between Maple Tree Logistics Trust and Maple Tree Industrial Trust. This is what management has mentioned before. Maple Tree Logistics Trust focuses on logistics assets. Maple Tree Industrial Trust, on the other hand, specifically excludes logistics assets. So sponsor also has a clear definition where they are pumping monies into their sponsees. With that clear, let's drill down a bit to specifics as to what I've discovered looking at its third quarter 2022 earnings. This is a quick glance piecing in 9 months worth of performance versus 6 months worth of performance. Long story short, what I've discovered that it's possible that on hindsight, Q2 seemed to be a peak in terms of operational numbers. When I compare Q1 and Q3, I realized that revenue had grown but very slowly but cost has actually grown at a faster pace. That is why the net property income has been shrinking. Cost includes electricity, taxes, labor costs, etc. etc. that anyone manages real estate would face. And I've always thought that this slowdown in net property income is definitely coming from the data center side because US tech is experiencing a downheaval, correct? But actually on closer scrutiny, it's actually not correct. Data centers are actually still performing well and generating more profits than in previous quarters. It's the Singapore assets, in particular high-tech business park and flatter factories, that are shrinking in profitability. 
That is why uh, when we dive into numbers without looking too deeply, we can't see presentations like this that say that, hey, compared to previous year, the per square foot is higher, occupancy is roughly the same. We think everything is good. But on a profitability factor wise, you will see that the business is facing some challenges. That's why Maple Tree Industry Trust focusing on data centers quite possibly is a good idea for us as investors. Data centers right now have been reclassified in its declaration of segments. And the goal for Maple Tree Industry Trust is to have about two thirds of its assets in data centers. The last one they have acquired seems to be about two years ago in 2021. So they haven't been buying more assets and leveraging up, but that is still a first round of refusal from a sponsor on this particular asset, Maple Tree Rosewood Data Center Trust, MRODCT, whereby it currently owns 50% and 50% is still held in its sponsor. When the time is right, hopefully this can be acquired into the REIT. So the next question is what about the loan risk for Maple Tree Industrial Trust, correct? I've actually put up key points for discussion. From this pie chart over here, you realize that there is 11.8% maturing this year and 10% maturing next year. So all in all, there's quite a bit more maturing in these two years itself. But 2024 and 2025 looks good. So there's quite a bit of loan to refi, which means the current all-in financing cost at 3.3% is definitely going to step up a bit more. It's mentioned over here already, if there's a 50 basis points change, 50 basis points is 0.5%. Change in interest cost, the DP will be impacted by 0.7%, which equates to 0.02 cents. This puts downward pressure on the DPU because you know when we invest into REITs, what I've always advocated is to find REITs that have a history of growing their DPU. This is something I've covered on the George Chan Finance Summit. And as always, if you are keen to learn a bit more, check out that summit. I have a full recorded version that you can watch anytime at home. I'll leave links below for you to purchase a recorded access to that. What we can see from Maple Tree Industry Trust's track record is that they've been growing this DPU steadily. Don't put too much focus on the distributable income blue bar below because a REIT can simply grow that by acquiring more and more assets. That's not a point. What we want as investors is DPU dividends per unit. And it's only in the last two years that that DPU has thought in terms of its growth. But why I'm interested in Maple Tree Industry Trust is that I believe in the long term, Net property income driven by data centers is likely going to grow. My assumption that it's still on the downward trend is not correct already. Things may not be as bad as what I feared. And that loan cost for REITs would definitely flatten off at some point in time. That's why when these two factors start working in favor for Maple Tree Industry Trust, I do believe that that DPU could reach new highs. As always, if you have benefited already, help me smash the like button so we can reach a bigger audience together. I'd like to introduce you to one of my previous videos before. This touches on key risk in data centers. And if you're curious about Capital DC Read, I've actually covered before in that tutorial. But more importantly, I've covered something that Jim Chanos, who is a famous investor, has mentioned about data centers. If you haven't seen that presentation, I'd like to invite you there and sign up from here. Take care as always, invest safely, and I'll see you in the next video.